In this video, I'm going to show you the best programming laptops you can get at every price range. No matter your budget, I will help you find the best pick for your needs. Let's go. First, we are going to take a look at the best options in the under $700 range. First, we have the Lenovo IdeaPad Slim 315 IH8. Its biggest strength for programming is the Zippy Intel Core 1512450H processor, which will compile your code noticeably faster than the other two laptops here. You get a comfortable keyboard that's great for typing all day and a solid 512 gigabytes of storage, but that powerful chip does mean the battery life won't be as marathon friendly as the Acer or Asus. The biggest catch, however, is the 8 gigabytes of soldered memory which you can never upgrade, and its display can be a bit washed out, making it less than ideal for staring at text for hours on end. Next we have the Acer Aspire 3. A31544P. While its AMD Ryzen 5 7520U processor is more focused on battery life than raw power, it's the beautiful full high definition IPS screen that really stands out against the Lenovo. This means your code will be much easier to read with better colors and viewing angles, which my eyes definitely appreciated during long debugging sessions. Like the Lenovo, you are stuck with 8GB of non-upgradable RAM, and its processor is the least powerful of this bunch, so you might notice its struggle with larger projects or running multiple development tools at once. Finally, we have the Asus VivoBook 16M by Farm 1605. This one feels like it finds the perfect middle ground with its capable AMD Ryzen 5 7530U processor that's more powerful than the ACRs. Its killer feature for programming is the 16 inch 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen, which gives you extra vertical space to see more lines of code at once, a massive quality of life improvement. Best of all, this is often the only one in this price range with upgradable RAM, making it the most future proof choice though you will be carrying a slightly larger and heavier machine than the other two. Next, we are going to take a look at the best options in the $700 to $1,200 range. First, we have the Lenovo ThinkPad E 14 Gen 6. From the moment I put my hands on this, the legendary keyboard immediately stood out as the best for long coding sessions, and paired with the new Intel Core Ultra processors, it handles compiling code and running local servers without breaking a sweat. The 16 by 10 aspect ratio on the screen lets me see more lines of code at once, but I have to admit the display itself isn't as bright or colorful as the other two options here. Ultimately, this is the definitive, reliable workhorse. It's built to last, has all the ports a developer could need including Ethernet, and a battery that easily gets through the day making it the practical choice over its flashier rivals. Next we have the Dell Inspiron 16 Plus 7640. The first thing you notice is the huge 16 inch screen which is an absolute dream for multitasking with my code editor, terminal, and a browser window all open side by side, plus its Intel Core Ultra H series processors are a step up in power from the ThinkPad. That size and power comes at a cost however, as it's noticeably heavier and bulkier than the others, and while the keyboard is perfectly fine, it just doesn't have that satisfying tactile feedback I got from the Lenovo. This is really the desktop replacement of the bunch. Perfect if you value maximum screen space and performance for your development work, and don't plan on carrying it around too often. Finally, we have the Acer Swift Go 14 SFG 1472. This laptop is all about the screen, featuring a breathtakingly sharp 2.8K OLED display that makes text and syntax highlighting look incredibly crisp, which is a huge bonus for reducing eye strain. It's also the lightest and most portable of the three, making it the clear winner if you're a developer who is always on the go between home, the office, or coffee shops. You do make some trade-offs, as the battery life can take a hit with all the white backgrounds in most code editors on an OLED panel, and the overall build doesn't feel quite as rugged or durable as the rock-solid ThinkPad. Next, we are going to take a look at the best options in the $1,200 to $1,800 range. First, we have the Apple MacBook Air 13-inch M4. The M4 chip provides an insane amount of performance for compiling code and running simulators, all while being completely silent because there are no fans, and the battery life feels like it lasts forever. I do love the ridiculously sharp and color accurate liquid retina display for staring at text all day, 
but the fanless design means it can get warm and slow down on really heavy, sustained tasks compared to the others, and you are absolutely stuck with only two Thunderbolt ports for everything. You have to be ready to carry adapters if you want to plug in an older monitor or a simple USB stick. Next we have the Lenovo ThinkPad P14 AS Gen 5. This machine is a programmer's dream if you prioritize function over form, with a keyboard that is simply the best for typing on for hours and a fantastic array of ports like USB-A and HDMI, meaning I never have to search for a dongle. I also really appreciate that you can upgrade the RAM and storage yourself later on, which is a huge advantage over both the MacBook and the XPS for future-proofing your development machine. While the Intel Core Ultra Processor inside is powerful and handles multiple development environments with ease, the overall design feels a bit plain, and the battery life, while good, just can't compete with the efficiency you get from the MacBook's M4 chip. Finally, we have the Dell XPS 149440. This laptop is a powerhouse wrapped in a beautiful package, and with the option for a dedicated NVIDIA GeForce RTX graphics card, it absolutely crushes the other two if you're doing any machine learning or game development work. The optional OLED screen is stunningly bright and smooth with its 120Hz refresh rate, but that beauty comes at a cost. As I found the keyboard's non-standard layout in the capacitive touch row, for function keys to be incredibly frustrating for coding, especially when you live on the escape key. Much like the MacBook, you're also limited to just a few Thunderbolt ports, which feels like a step back from the utilitarian ThinkPad. Next, we are going to take a look at the best options in the $1,800 to $2,500 range. First, we have the Apple MacBook Pro 14-inch. Now, the M4 Max chip mentioned isn't actually out yet, and will likely be much more expensive, so I've been using the M3 Pro model which fits right into this price category. The raw performance for compiling code is just incredible, and the battery life is in a class of its own, letting me code for an entire day away from the wall without worry. The build quality and keyboard feel absolutely premium, but you're paying a high price for that, and you're stuck with the memory and storage you buy on day one since nothing is upgradable. While its operating system is amazing for most development, especially for mobile apps, you are locked into the Apple ecosystem, and it lacks the sheer port variety you get on the HP, meaning you will probably live the dongle life. Next, we have the Dell XPS 69640. This thing is a powerhouse for programmers who need Windows, packing an Intel Core Ultra Processor and a dedicated NVIDIA graphics card that tore through my machine learning and data science workloads. The massive 16-inch organic light-emitting diode screen is absolutely beautiful to look at for hours, making code sharp and easy to read, plus the Windows subsystem for Linux gives you great versatility. However, I found the new keyboard design with its flat keys and touch-sensitive function row to be a real challenge for fast and accurate typing during long coding sessions, which could be a deal-breaker. It offers more raw performance for your money than the MacBook, but that power comes at the cost of battery life, and this machine runs noticeably hotter and louder when you push it hard. Finally, we have the HP ZBook Power G11. This laptop is a straight-up industrial tool for serious programmers, built for absolute reliability with certifications that ensure your professional software runs flawlessly, which the flashy XPS doesn't guarantee. It's loaded with ports, including a dedicated Ethernet jack, and best of all, you can easily open it up to upgrade the random access memory and storage yourself, making it a much more flexible long-term investment. The keyboard is a dream for typing on all day, but this all comes in a package that is significantly thicker and heavier than the other two, prioritizing pure function over sleek design. Compared to the MacBook and XPS, the ZBook is the pragmatic choice. Its screen isn't as vibrant, but it's the machine I'd grab for mission-critical development where stability and serviceability are more important than anything else. Next, we're going to take a look at the best options in the dollar $2,500 plus range. First, we have the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 13 Aura Edition. This laptop is unbelievably thin and light, and its Snapdragon X Elite chip promises some truly mind-blowing all-day battery life, which is fantastic when you're coding away from a power outlet. The huge catch for me, and for any serious developer, is that ARM-based processor. You are rolling the dice on whether your entire tool chain from Docker containers to specific virtual machines will run without a massive headache. While you get that classic amazing ThinkPad keyboard with the red track point, the ARM performance for compiling large code bases is a serious unknown compared to the established Intel chips in the Dell and the other ThinkPad. Next we have the Dell Precision. 
Precision 5690. This machine is an absolute performance beast built with high-end Intel Core Ultra processors and professional NVIDIA RTX Ada graphics that will chew through massive code compiles, machine learning models, or game engine work without breaking a sweat. All that incredible power makes this laptop noticeably heavier and bulkier than the X1 Carbon, and be prepared for the cooling fans to really spin up and make some noise when you push it hard for a long time. It provides way more raw computational power for demanding tasks than the other two, but I find the typing experience isn't quite as comfortable or satisfying as what you get from a ThinkPad keyboard. Finally, we have the Lenovo ThinkPad P1 Gen 7. This model hits a sweet spot trying to give you the best of both worlds with powerful Intel Core Ultra chips and Nvidia graphics packed into a relatively slim and light design for a workstation. It's a compromise, however, meaning it's not as feather light as the X1 Carbon, and its cooling might not keep up with the beefier Dell Precision during super intense, long-running tasks. For my money, this feels like the perfect developer's machine. You get that legendary ThinkPad keyboard that is a joy to type on all day, almost all the power of the Dell for heavy lifting, and none of the software compatibility worries you'd face with the ARM-based X1 Carbon. Thanks for watching, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you found this video to be helpful, leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future.